Coming up to this episode, a new legislative act comes to further the return of the illegal migrants. Stay tuned to find out more. This is Haragioka. Welcome to Actua TV. Welcome to your Europe. In front of the tens of thousands of refugees that were coming from Turkey via Greece, Europe had to also deal with a number of migrants that were not indeed in a need of asylum, but in a need of better living conditions. Facing this situation, Europe sets the EU-Turkey deal aiming, among others, to control illegal migration. Compromise four, the vote is open. On top of this effort, the European Parliament open. Civil Liberties Committee introduced a new legislative the act, the, the travel document. What this document aims is to speed up the return of the illegal migrants back to their countries safely and put an end to the abuse of the asylum system by actually allowing only to refugees to apply for asylum in the European countries. In order to avoid counterfeiting and falsification, the new measure involves a series of technical and personal details such as the name, the age, the gender, the distinguishing marks and the passport photograph. Final step for this action to come into force is European Council's approval. Joining me to this episode, Mr. Jussi Halajo, a member of the European Parliament from Finland, registered with the Conservatives and Reformist Group. Mr. Halajo, welcome. Thank you very much. Well, uh, on top of the EU-Turkey deal that ensures to a point that illegal migrants are being deported back to Turkey, we have a new legislative act. Can you explain us further? Well, the, the travel document that we are supposed to talk about uh, today has nothing to do with the with the agreement between Turkey and the European Union. The Turkey deal is a strategic attempt by the European Union to stem the, the uncontrolled influx of irregular migrants into Europe. The deal is that uh, Europe uh, returns all irregular migrants who are coming from Turkey back to Turkey and then resettles a corresponding number of Syrian refugees directly from uh, Turkish camps in, exactly a, in a regular indeed manner. That is true. Yeah. But European Commission promoted this action, the EU-Turkey deal, that is something to help, to boost and control the irregular migration also. Mm. Am I correct? <laughs> yes, the ex it, ex it is exactly the idea of the EU-Turkey deal to try and stem the uncontrolled influx of irregular migrants to Europe because the situation right now is chaotic. Uh, Greece, for example, was turning into a giant uh, refugee camp and it was impossible in practice to relocate those asylum seekers uh, to other member states for a number of reasons. But we will see how this works. Uh, there are some alarming indications that Turkey might withdraw from the agreement, but we will see. So this new uh, legislative act, what exactly is it? Uh, you mean the travel document? The travel document, exactly. What exactly is the travel document? Is a European passport. What is it? Uh, no. Um, one long-term deficiency in our asylum and migration policies is that although a large number of asylum seekers uh, the, their applications are rejected because they are not in genuine need of international protection. Uh, but only less than 40% of those negative decisions are actually enforced. Which means in practice that if you come to Europe and apply for asylum, even if the, the decision is negative, in most cases you are very likely to stay in Europe. And uh, in my opinion this seriously undermines the credibility and the legitimacy of our uh, asylum rules in the eyes of our citizens. So we are not talking about uh, creating new strict rules for asylum. We are talking about better enforcing and implementing that legislation which we already have in Europe. Mr. Halajo, how can we be sure that they are being deported only people that indeed they are not in need of asylum? Well, their applications have been assessed according to the national laws, according to the EU law, according to the <clears throat> international law, such as the Geneva Refugee Convention. So, uh, refugee and international protection are legal terms. 
in order to be granted international protection or refugee status, you must uh, prove that you meet the criteria. And people who do not meet those criteria receive a negative decision and uh, they must be deported because otherwise the asylum system just becomes a channel of economic migration. At the moment, the criteria for international protection are not uh, within the EU competence. The, they are, the decisions are made by individual member states. And uh, the practices, unfortunately, vary very much. For example, if you are a person arriving from Iraq or from some country like Somalia, uh, you are much more likely to uh, to get a residence permit and international protection uh, in Scandinavian countries than you are in many Central European countries. And unfortunately, this has led to significant asylum shopping within Europe. How many unsuccessful applications have been turned down by now? Uh, I can't give you exact numbers because that greatly depends on what member state we are talking about. As I said, uh, refugees from certain important countries of origin are very likely uh, to get international protection from some member states, whereas some member states uh, are very reluctant to grant international protection to, uh, to anyone. I don't know the overall figures in all of Europe. I have to sincerely thank you and thank you all of you. See you next week. Actua TV. Het hele verhaal.